Today, inshallah, I will speak to you about one of the benefits of the name of Allah, Al-Qawi. Al-Qawi means the strong or the mighty and the powerful. But in order to understand this very incredible word that describes the name of Allah, and its meanings, obviously, for, as the moment you hear it, you can understand that Allah is all-powerful and capable over everything. But the way in which Allah describes this name and places this name at the end of Surah Al-Hajj is absolutely remarkable. And it's probably one of the most place, important places, I would argue, in the Qur'an to understand the benefits for Allah being Al-Qawi for a believer. So we all believe in His names, but each one of those names benefits us in some way. It helps us in some way. And how does the name Al-Qawi help us? One of the best places to learn that is at the end of the 22nd surah of the Mus'haf, uh, Surah Al-Hajj. In the surah, Allah gives an example to help humanity understand something about Himself. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ ضُرِبَ مَثَلٌ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ People, an example is being given, listen to it carefully. That's how he starts. An example is being given, listen to it carefully. You know, usually Allah says, Allah gave an example. This time He says, an example is being given. Instead of mentioning Himself. So He removed the speaker from the conversation. So that's the, a side note, but an important one that I'd like you to understand. You see, I'm standing here in front of you right now, I look a certain way, I have a beard, I'm dressed like this, I have a kufi on my head, etc. And you can listen to me and you can listen to me recite something of the Qur'an or share something with you. But imagine a scenario in which you're waiting for me to come and speak and this 16-year-old kid comes up here and he's got tattoos on his arm and he's got you know a t-shirt on and jeans and a baseball hat on backwards. And before he even gets up on the mic, some people are running for the door, some people are thinking, do they have to make their salah again? You know, some people, some people are thinking, you know, we're, we should, somebody should take him off the... And he starts speaking. And he gives the best speech you've ever heard. And he quotes, and he cites, and he gives a reminder that you can't imagine, you've never heard something more powerful. Now, those of you that are looking at him, have a very hard time benefiting from what he's saying, because the moment you see him, like, why is this guy even talking? But imagine somebody on the other side, outside, because the microphone works outside, yes? And they only heard his speech. So the people inside are saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And the people outside are saying what? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. <laughs> well, the reason I'm giving you this example is because before we judge what is being said, human beings can't help it, they judge what? what you, the appearance. They, we were so focused on the appearance, that we leave behind what's actually being said. So we size people up and we say, well, whatever this person has to say, probably not worth listening to. Or whatever this person has to say, probably worth more listening to. Just because of how they look. It could be because of the color of their skin sometimes. It could be because of the way they're dressed or their age. These things that are on the outside, we immediately form an opinion, maybe I should be more carefully listening to this, or not listening to this at all, even before a person opens their mouth. Allah in this ayah removes, removes focus on the speaker. He says an example is being given. An example is being struck. Leave aside Allah is giving it or the messenger is giving it. or Forget who's giving it, just focus on the example itself. And that's because a lot of people in the world, the moment they hear Allah said, they say, oh here we go, another khutbah. Let me watch something else. The moment you hear the messenger said, ah, come on, can we talk about oh, always religious stuff? Can we talk about something else? So the moment they hear that Allah is the one speaking, or the messenger is the one speaking, some people just tune out. They don't want to hear it. So Allah does, what does He do in this remarkable example? He says, this is for all of humanity, Ya ayyuhan nas, and, and not all of humanity is interested in listening to Allah. So Allah says, even if you're not interested in listening to Him, listen to the example. Duriba mathal, fastami'u lahu, then listen to it carefully, give it a chance. So He, call, he, he describes something about Himself now. And he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا All of those that you're calling on, other than Allah, they can't even create one fly. One fly. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا لَهُ Even if all of them had gathered together for the project of producing and creating one single fly. And as you listen to that, you say, what's the point of Allah telling us they can't even create a fly? What's the point of that? And let's go further. And, the, and a fly is not exactly an impressive creature. Actually, a fly is one of the most important, like annoying, you know, creations that human beings experience. You want to get rid of them, you see them and you just want them to go away, etc. Or a place that's dirty, or a place that's, you know, or if you have good food, and flies show up, they're ruining the food. 
right? So you want to get rid of the flies. Allah says they couldn't even create a single fly. But he adds something. He says, وَإِن يَسْلُبْهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْءً لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُهُ مِنْهُ If the fly, this one fly, first of all, they can't create it. They can't create it. Then this fly, let's just say you're eating your food, and it came and sat on your food for a second. And it rubs its legs, and it takes a little bit of your food. And then you do this, and it flies away. And Allah says, if, there, if a fly came and took something of their food, all of humanity can gather together and they can't get back that one piece of food. That's what he says about, they can't rescue it back. They can't rescue it back. Now imagine human beings, some human beings are weak, some human beings are strong, some human beings are poor, some human beings are wealthy, some human beings are powerless, they don't even have a home. Other human beings have the power to launch nuclear weapons. Other human beings control the mightiest armies on earth in history and today. So even if Fir'aun who had the largest army on earth was sitting at home eating a burger and a fly came and disrespected the king. Can you imagine if a king is eating food and somebody says, hey, I like that. Let me try some of that ketchup. They're going to die. But a fly comes and does what? Takes a little bit of his food. And even if Fir'aun gets really angry, how dare this fly take my food? I want it back. No one dare take from me. Even if they caught that fly, what are they going to do? They can't get that food back. Now Allah in this remarkable ayah showed something else too. People used to worship idols in the past. Yeah? When they used to worship idols, a lot of you know, religions where they worship idols, they bring food to the idols. So they bring you know, milk and the honey and like you know, chocolate, ice cream, I don't know, whatever they bring, they put it in front and then they do their prayers. Now the, usually these temples, they're open door. And you have the statue and you have this food lying in front. Guess what shows up? These flies show up. And this giant statue of a god that they worship, it shows up, it sits on its nose and tells him, hey, I'm going to eat your sandwich, you don't mind, right? And then it goes and it takes their food and then it flies off. And their god is powerless to defend. And by the way, that same food that they put as you know, altars and they, the sacred food, right? They, they blow over it, they pray over it, etc. If you went and said, hey, that's my favorite chocolate, and you tried to get some of it, what would they do to you? They'd kill you if you eat it. That's, sac that's sacrilegious. And yet, their religion gets humiliated by what? Every, every moment. Flies. Allah says, the fly is teaching you that these gods are powerless. The fly is teaching you that. So Allah says, I'll give you a small example. Those of you who you call on other than Allah, first of all, can't even create a single fly. And if the fly was to take even a little bit from them, how are they going to get it back? Interestingly enough, I got curious about flies because of this ayah. Like, what, how do flies eat? And what I didn't know that I learned a long time ago when I was studying this ayah, is when flies sit on food, they release saliva, they release spit, and they create a bag with their spit. And the food goes inside this bag and they carry it away. And the bag is made of acid. So the moment it touches the food, it has a chemical reaction and the food changes forever. So if you developed a technology to prove the ayah wrong, and you found a way to capture that fly, and put it under a petri dish, and then get scientists to get that little piece of your burger back, it's gone the moment the fly touched it. You can't get it back. 